What is up YouTube? Thrift School over here. I am heading about an hour across the state to go pick up two Japanese edition Nintendo DS, 3DSs, DSs, something like that. Cool special edition ones. I'm paying $80. Uh, they're worth a good amount of money. You guys will see that. And then we're going to go thrifting across the state. So we're going to hit up some cool Goodwills, see if we find anything awesome to flip over on eBay and Amazon. Christmas is right around the corner. So prices are nice and high right now online. So the more I find, hopefully the more money I'll make. Let's go. All right, we are driving to the meetup right now. I'm really close. We're meeting at a library. It just started snowing down here, and I realized I'm $20 short to pay the kid. <laughs> so hopefully he has Venmo or PayPal. Otherwise, I have to find an ATM. All right, so I don't really know where to go. He said in the library, but there's like no entrance. I haven't been down here in a long time, and uh, this does not look right. Uh, the, oh, Danbury Public Library entrance. There we go. Right underneath all this construction. That's safe. All right, so I just talked to one of the construction workers. The library's been closed since uh, the past couple months. So hopefully the kid's here. I, don't, I have no idea. So I think it's out front over here. So I got to walk down this street. And I think he's going to be like out front of the library. Uh, I don't know. Should be okay. We'll see. So I'm waiting for him to respond and it's really cold out here. <laughs> the snow is freezing, but the library is really pretty. Take a look at that. That is a nice looking library. But uh, he's not here. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, the library is closed. La Biblioteca Esta Serrata. Did I say that right? I have no idea. So, all right, whatever, whatever. Okay, the deal is done and it's a great deal. Look at how stained this seat is, what the heck? That's how I got the car, but that's a shame. Uh, <laughs> the deal is done and take a look what we got. 80 bucks got us this 2DS XL Pokeball edition. Guys, these things are selling for like $250 on Amazon right now. And then we got a 3DS, which I didn't know this. He never told me, but it is the Japanese edition. So uh, the back here is all in Japanese. You cannot change the language on it. I tried to change the language to English and there's no options. So um, hopefully this is still worth something, but 80 bucks was a steal. I'm happy with that. Let's go to Goodwill now and hope we find some more cool stuff. All right, YouTube, we are here outside of Goodwill. The sun's going down. I was on the phone with my dad for a good half hour or so. So let's see if we can find anything in here. I'm excited. I hope you guys are. I've been watching lots of people come in and out. Let's go. So first thing I see when I walk in is this Star Wars racer car thing. It's like one of the ones for the kids that they could get in and ride around, but it was $100. I did look it up online, selling for like 300 and something brand new. Pretty cool. There was no way for me to test it and no way I wanted to sell that. So I left it. Maybe somebody will get a kick out of it. So I move on over to the DVDs. I'm looking for anything that looks interesting, anything that I've never seen before, Highway to Heaven. Never heard of it before, Highway in Heaven? I don't know. I scanned it into Amazon, and you know, there just wasn't any money to be made in it. Um, and that's what I like to do. I, I just sit here, I'll scan through a bunch, and you know, if I find some winners, I find some winners. I'm showing you guys exactly how I do it. Scan it in, and look at that. 11.47 brand new, $2.32 used. This is used, so there's obviously no money to be made there. I think they were asking four or five bucks for it. And I'm just looking, I don't really see any other movies, but take a look at all these video games. All brand new sealed too. I ended up grabbing a few good scores out of there. And then I noticed these video games on the side. We see $4 and then I start to notice $6 ones. Well, those green tags are the new pricing that came in this week. And it uh, looks like the person is jacking up the prices on video games. There were a few good games in here for, you know, um, six dollars that just wouldn't really be worth it for me to uh, buy and flip so leaving the video games i did grab some of those sealed ones i'll show you guys everything at the end of this video everything i picked up taking a look at the electronics wall 
And what do I see here? I thought it was a bread maker, but it's actually an ice crusher. Bread makers have gone way up in value this year, guys. Even if you're just buying it, if it's, you know, they were asking $25, which is kind of crazy. But if you find a bread maker for five, six, seven dollars $7, you're pretty much guaranteed to make money. If you don't even feel like shipping a giant heavy bread maker, the parts in it are worth good money. Just the little pan inside and everything is worth some good money. Keep your eyes out. That's something you should be on the lookout for. Now, I do find this HP um, toner cartridge here, 85A, and I've sold these lots of times in the past. I think they wanted 12 bucks for it. I did look it up on eBay because I cannot sell those on Amazon, and it was worth it. Sweet. Then I saw some cat food. Pretty interesting. I've never seen cat food at a Goodwill before. It's only a dollar. That's pretty cool. If you uh, need to get some cat food, here's some dog treats. I don't know what's going on here. I, I have found food inside of Goodwills before, like canned goods and chocolate and things like that, which is always so odd to me. Who buys food at Goodwill? I guess cat food. I don't know. I wouldn't buy any food at Goodwill. It's just, just not what I do. I thought this Casio keyboard was kind of cool here. I did end up looking it up, the CTK710, and they only sell for like 35 bucks plus shipping on eBay. There's really no money to be made in it. It was missing its power cord. It does also run off of batteries, but to ship a keyboard is just, that's not fun. Unless you're making a couple hundred dollars, I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't recommend it at all. And then I turn around behind me and look at all of these TVs in here. No wonder why they're not selling. They're asking $100 for these old, they're pretty thick, honestly, TVs. You know, some of them are like 50, 75, but $100? I doubt these things are even 1080. You know, some of them look a little newer than others, but I, I know they were not really worth what they were asking for. But, you know, I did grab a few things in here, and since I didn't find too much in here, let's go to another thrift store. We're going to do two thrift stores in one. This is going to be really sweet, guys. Let's go. So I didn't find a lot at that first thrift store. I did all right based on how much money I'll make, but let's go to this one now and see what we find. This one's much bigger. Now, I didn't get a lot of footage inside this thrift store, but the haul at the end, guys, you have to see it. I got so much stuff, and you want to know why? Take a look at the top of these clothing racks. Look at all of these games and toys, and it is right before Christmas. This is when things are jacked up in price. We got lots of different special edition Monopolies up here, Star Wars Monopoly, regular Monopoly, My Little Pony Monopoly, just some really cool, unique things that I want to toss in the cart. And what I do is I stick everything in the cart and then I'll go look, count all the pieces in the corner of the store, look things up at the corner of the store, right? I feel like that's the best way to do it, especially when the store is packed with people. I feel like it's just easier to grab, throw it in the cart, do all your research later. Now, one thing I didn't realize while I was in here, this thrift store isn't like Goodwill or Savers or Value Village. They don't stay open until 8, 9 o'clock. They close at 6 p.m. And guys, while I'm filming this, it's already after 5 o'clock. So we did come into a bit of an issue. I start to just keep finding games and games and games. And you'll see my cart in a minute here. It gets really full. It doesn't look full yet, but it gets extremely full. And I didn't have time to count the pieces. So we're going to take a gamble. We're going to buy everything that you see in the cart right now without counting pieces. All right, let's see. I mean, I don't recommend doing this, but the prices on these games are pretty good. If some don't have the pieces, I think I'll still make some money. If they don't have, if none of them have pieces or none of them are complete, then we're in for some trouble. Let's head home and see how I did. All right, guys, we are back at the house. Here is everything I got. It is late now. It's dark outside, but... This is everything I have to go through. I ran out of time. I couldn't look through all the boxes, so I'm looking through them all now. It's 30 degrees in this garage, so it's forcing me to go through them faster. I'm wearing a nice, um, very comfortable sweater and sweatpants and slippers. I should be good. Um, this is a lot to go through. I have a Truly to get me through it, and I'm watching Shed Flips up there. So I'm gonna pull out a chair and start counting pieces and uh, hopefully most of these are complete. I really have no idea, but we got a lot of stuff, guys. A lot of stuff. So when I'm all done counting, I'll lay them out, 
and we'll see which ones were good buys, which ones were bad buys. They, they should all be good buys if they're complete, but I have no idea if they are. Let's go. So what I have going here is I'm putting all the sealed things down here, the things that are complete over there, and we have our first incomplete right here. It is some sort of coding game. You can see right there, Code Master Programming Logic Game by ThinkFun. And uh, I'm supposed to have six of these little crystals. I only have three, so I can call it quits right here since I know the other three aren't in here unless they're combined. They're not. So, yeah, okay, we have our first loser. Maybe I can part it out. I don't know. I have officially finished everything, so let's break it down. All right, guys, so first things first, here are the ones missing pieces. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see how much money we have lost. Blue was half off, so that's $1 off. This was red, but it was only $2, so we're at $3. Two more dollars, so $5. This was half off, so a buck 50, we're at $6.50. One dollar, so seven fifty, and then this one was two dollars, so nine fifty. After tax, about ten bucks, so we lost ten dollars. Now, there's two things I could do with this stuff. I can try to sell the parts and pieces. I'll definitely make ten dollars off of just parts and pieces on this stuff, or. I can keep these games since they're only missing like two to three pieces. Now I did go on eBay to try to find parts and pieces for these and there's not many people selling them because these aren't super popular games. There's not a lot of people selling pieces or the games just aren't worth it for me to buy the pieces. Perfect example, this NFLopoly right here. Um, after fees, I was only going to make about eight to nine dollars on Amazon for it. I only paid a buck or two, so it's not that big of a deal, but to buy extra pieces, if they cost me $5, I'm only making like $4 after all is said and done on it. I mean, I guess that's still a way to make $4, but I, I looked anyways and nobody's selling the pieces. So that's kind of my issue with these. So I could be the one selling pieces, or I can take these and put them on a shelf and Odds are I'll come across these games again in the future. If I see them for a buck or two again, I can make a complete game and a game that cost me $2, I buy it again for $2, now it cost me $4. Instead of me making $10 profit, I'll make $8 profit. It's really no big deal. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm just gonna leave these on a shelf, maybe out in a garage, like right here, or just somewhere that doesn't really matter. I mean, uh, the garage doesn't get wet, so I don't have to worry about these getting wet. So that's that. Let's move on to the next ones. This stack right here is all brand new stuff. Next to this treadmill box, this thing is massive. We just got a treadmill uh, delivered this morning and I put it together and it's really big. I was gonna put it in the basement, but I couldn't move it down there. So it's gonna sit here until the Christmas tree gets taken down and then we'll move it into that corner there and figure out what to do with that. But for now, uh, it's gonna sit right in the middle of the house. That's fine. All right, so moving on to the brand new stuff, let's take a look. Let's see what we got in here. We have some good things. We have a brand new sealed Lego set, Lego Creator. Now the box has some uh, wear. It's not in perfect condition. There's a, It's a little squished down here. It has a little bit of wear. So I'm gonna sell it as collectible on Amazon even though it's brand new sealed. So somebody's gonna get a great deal there. I'm gonna pop all the prices up here on the screen for you guys so you can see what this stuff is going to sell for. Um, I believe this was over $40 even in used condition. So not bad there, I paid six bucks for it. The next thing we have is a brand new sealed stow and go puzzle roll up. I paid six bucks for that as well. This thrift store charges between like six and 10, sometimes more for anything that's sealed. Um, you'll see a, a trend. Most of the things are $6 that are sealed. Uh, so that's, you know, it's not a horrible price. It's not a great price. Uh, at least the used stuff is pretty cheap. So again, I'm not really sure what it's going for. The price is up on the screen for you guys. So, hey, I'm happy with this. I know I'm gonna make some decent money on it. 
Another interesting thing that I sell pretty often are these creativity for kids. It's like a make your own book set. They have ones with stone, make your own like handprint in a stone and things like that. This one was only $4, so that's nice. And uh, I'll make some good money on it. It's a little heavy, but since I'm shipping everything into Amazon, everything's gonna cost me about 50 cents or less. This game looks really cool. The Resistance Secret Identities. It just looks cool. I kind of want to play it, but I'm not going to. This was $6, but blue was half off, so it was only 3 bucks. 3 bucks for a brand new sealed game. You guys see how much money I'm going to make? Not bad. I'm definitely happy with this one. So right before I was about to leave because the thrift store was closing and I didn't have much time to count pieces, hence why I took the gamble here, um, they put out a couple board games, and this was one of them for $8, though. Very heavy, but again, shipping into Amazon, so shipping's not going to cost me much at all. Uh, going to make some good money on it for a brand new sealed NFL game. Eight bucks. And another one that was sitting right next to it, because they both got brought out at probably right at the same time, was this Cub. Five dollars. This is an older version. These guys go for like fifty dollars. Awesome. Some older versions of games sell well. Another one that you guys should be on the lookout for is Scategories. The older 90s version sells so well. That's the version I actually have, and that's the version I like to play. And it sells for much more than the newer versions. Then this wasn't at the thrift store, but these were a great find. This was right across the parking lot in Game Exchange. It's a video game store, but they had some board games for sale. You can see the price right down there of $39.95. The lowest prime seller is at around $150. Merchants are coming in at about 60 or 60 or 70. So, I mean, if I could get 100 bucks each for these, I got two of them. I'd be pretty happy. Then I picked up this Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. I like to make complete sets of Harry Potter books, and this was only $2, so it's always good to have extra Harry Potter books for when I make a complete set. Oh, by the way, I didn't say, uh, the sets sell for between $60 and $80, so if I get all the books and I'm paying a buck to two each, make some pretty good money. They ship media mail, which means just books, CDs, DVDs, things like that. They ship at a lower rate. So even though a bunch of books would be really heavy, it still doesn't cost me much to ship. And the last brand new thing is this Hot Wheels book for $2. It's going for like $60 on Amazon. And you guys can see the car is still sealed in there. Everything's sealed, but my one issue, they wrote one R in Sharpie on there. So I'm gonna have to try and get that off very gently, maybe with some rubbing alcohol or something. I don't know, I, want, I don't wanna damage the book at all since it's new. Uh, it's, yeah, it's a book, right? Yeah, it's a book. Uh, I don't wanna damage that at all, so I'm gonna do my best to take it off without fading any of the artwork. So that should be fun later. All right, now moving on to the used stuff that's good. Also, my hands are starting to turn like a purplish out here. Like I said, it's 30 degrees, probably colder now. It was 30 degrees like three hours ago. So it is freezing. This is not climate controlled. There is no insulation in here. So I've just been sitting out here for at least an hour and uh, you do what you do because I got to get this stuff into Amazon. So one issue, I got two of these Stratego games they're both the same model, same everything. This one is complete and very, very clean, except the one issue on it. Let's see if we could open it up without knocking everything over. The one issue is this little castle right here. It, you know, it folds. It's supposed to stand up. You could see tape on it. So it must have ripped at some point and the person just taped it back together. Again, you could see it's in really good shape. Everything underneath is in like perfectly mint condition. The game board, all the pieces are there, very clean. But this, this kind of makes me not want to send it into Amazon, even if I sold it as acceptable condition, which I might do. Um, I might rather just sell it on eBay, but here's the issue. If a game sells for $25 shipped on Amazon, you'll profit about 18 or so. Well, let's actually take a look. Let, let's scan it into Amazon. All right, here is the game. Decent rank in toys, selling for $22.80. I would make $12.82 because the fees are $9.98. That's not bad. Now let's see what it's going for over on eBay. Remember, $12.82 is what I would make. 
Let's see on eBay, it's selling for about the same price, 24, 25, 26, 22. I'm gonna be on the lower end because of the ripped board. So let's just say it sells for $23. So pretty much the same price as Amazon. Amazon again was at $22.80. So let's say we sell it on eBay for $22.80. Let's see how much I'll make. I use this app to calculate my eBay costs. It's called Final Fee Calculator. It's on Android. I don't know about Apple, but let's say our sold price is $22.80. Uh, we'll charge no shipping because we're already priced at where we want to sell it for. Our shipping cost to ship a board game like this, if it's going one state over, could cost as low as eight to nine dollars. If it's going to California, could cost as high as uh, 12 to 13 dollars maybe possibly more but usually not so let's just break it in the middle and say 11 bucks so if it costs me 11 dollars to ship it i'll be making eight dollars and 56 cents so eight dollars and 56 cents on ebay or 12 dollars and 82 cents on Amazon. That is a $4 difference. That's actually pretty large when it comes to items where, you know, what did I pay for this? I paid $3 for this. So we want to try and sell it for that on that Amazon price to make $10 profit. So maybe I'll still send it into Amazon and I'll just mark it as acceptable, write it all down and just explain what's up with this. Now I might have an extra Stratego board or I find this game all the time. Maybe I'll find one uh, missing some pieces and I could just take this out of it. That, that's another option. All right, let's continue with some of these items here. This is a Circle Home uh, from Disney. Why am I having a hard time picking this up? It's uh, Circle with Disney, it says. Uh, it was $13 and I'm going to double up my money at least. So I just got it, I tested it, I plugged it into the wall, and it works great, so that's cool. Uh, another Stratego game, you guys saw the whole breakdown of how much I'm gonna make on it, $12.80, I paid three bucks for it, I'll make about $10 in profit. And this one is in perfect condition, not like that one. This one right here, Phase 10 Masters, really good money on this, maybe because it's discontinued or something, but take a look at that price, guys. Insane what this little game's going for, I only paid 99 cents. Another amazing find right here. Beethoven Complete Masterpieces CD uh, CD set. I paid $20 for it, right? Probably nobody scanned it or looked it up because of that $20 price range. And there's 60 CDs that I had to check and make sure they were all in great condition. They're, they're all mint. Nothing wrong with them, guys. Selling for like $150 for the CD set. Now, that's actually not even the most expensive CD set I've ever sold. I sold an Aretha Franklin complete um, discology for about $350. So CDs still sell well, guys. Always keep an eye out for them. Then we have another little game right here, Risky Raceways. I paid $2, it was half off, so I only paid a buck for it. Uh, it's complete, super clean inside. Make some decent money on it for a dollar purchase. Another game I've never seen before, and this is what I do. I go into the thrift store and I'll just look up things I've never seen before. A lot of these games aren't very popular, besides those Strategos are pretty popular. Um, but a lot of these I've never heard of, like that Cars Risky Raceway, Tumble Maze, never heard of this. Um, but I do know the brand, Blue Orange. I've sold their games lots of times in the past. And this is very, very clean inside. Of course, I checked everything. I put everything uh, where it's supposed to be in here so it doesn't shake around too much. Very nice, gonna make some decent money, and I only paid $1.50. Another sleeper of a game, guys. This classic pit, corner of the market card game. I only paid 99 cents for it. This is insane. Take a look at that price on the screen. Now the rank is pretty high. That rank on Amazon means uh, when it's in that 700, 800,000 range, means it's gonna take a long time to sell. And I'm hoping with Christmas right around the corner, this thing sells within two weeks. No idea if it will or not. I'm hoping it does though. Here's another great uh, game with a great brand that I like to sell, Think Fun. See it right up there in the corner. I sell Think Fun stuff all the time. This one's very clean, complete in there, 99 cents. Never seen this game before though, and selling for pretty good money. I think $20, $25, I'll take it. 
Another thing, funnily, funnily enough, funnily, is that a word? Uh, another thing, funnily, wow, that sounds weird. Uh, funny enough, I've sold these mouth guards lots of times in the past. I don't know why I always find these. $2.99 at half price, so a buck fifty. Uh, these things sell really, really fast. And uh, I think it's flavored, which is really weird. Uh, is this one flavored? I don't know. It says classic fit. Uh, I don't think it's flavored, but still very interesting. Some of these are flavored, which is weird to me. Another really good game that I've never heard of before, Hit or Miss. It's extremely clean inside. It's a Barnes & Noble exclusive. That's kind of cool. I just noticed that. Uh, another great brand that I find all the time, Game Right. They make pretty good games. And I only paid $1.99 for it. There were a lot of, lot of cards in here for me to count, like 260 or something like that. So it took a while to count, but it was worth it. I grew up playing Othello all the time with my mom. I played this game like every single day for months when my mom showed it to me. I loved it. And then we continue to still play it today. I, I love this game. Uh, this was only 99 cents. It's very easy to count. There's only 64 little pieces in there and then you're all done. And it was very clean. So decent money. This is an older version. People like to pay up for older versions of games. Another game I've never seen before, Scrabble Jr. All the little pieces are in there. I, I did count everything. There was about 105 blocks, the four characters, and a game board, and a spinner, I think. Was there a spinner? I, no, there was no spinner in this game. It doesn't matter. Sold, I uh, paid 99 cents. It's selling for a pretty decent amount of money for a dollar purchase. I'm happy. All right, more books. Uh, I don't really buy books too much, but whenever I see box sets, I like to scan them. This was $8. Uh, is it Anne of Green Gate? No, Little House on the Prairie. And $8 purchase selling, I think after fees, I'll make about 20 or so. So I'll make 12 bucks after what I paid for it pretty easily too. Another game I've never seen before, Cranium Hula Baloo. This is actually really hard to hold with one hand. It's heavy. I paid a buck for it. It just has this little electronic thing in here. I actually have to test it. I haven't tested it. I got to put some batteries in it, make sure it works. But all the pieces are in here. It's pretty clean. I have no reason why it wouldn't work unless somebody left batteries in the, and it got corroded. That happens a lot. The, you need a screwdriver to open it up. So I'll save that for when I'm about to list it online and make sure it's in good shape. Another Stratego. I like selling Stratego. It's really easy to count the pieces. This one's only a buck fifty. This is a cool futuristic one. And uh, everything's in here, of course. Super nice, super clean. Gonna make some good money. Shara Doodles. And look at that brand up there, guys. Think Fun. I always like to sell their stuff. It sells super quick. Always good ranks. Never seen this one before. And I mean, here's the thing though, right? I went in there scanning used games. I don't normally do that because it does take a long time for me to count these pieces, right? This isn't something that you want to do all the time because it has taken, it's taken a while, really, you know, and I got a few over here that aren't worth anything, but that was just my own doing. <laughs> that was just me taking a gamble and it is paying off though. Again, I paid one dollar because it was half off for this, so I'm happy with that. I'm lucky I went on half off day. It really shaved off a lot of money and it actually helped me on those games because I ended up saving a few bucks on things that could have ended up costing me a little bit more. So going to make some decent money on this. The last one is the Skipbo Deluxe, which is a very, very uh, expensive game. I only paid 99 cents for it. It is complete in there. It is very clean. It's heavy. Wow. It's like super heavy. There were a lot of cards in here. I always check the backs to see all the contents. Yeah, 162 cards. One Skipbo Deluxe Game Board, one score pad, one pencil, and one, oh, you know what? There was no pencil in here, so I have to include a pencil. No big deal. I have a whole bunch of them. I'll just throw one in there. And then we have another CD set right here, A to Z Classical Music, $2.99, so $3.00. And this is selling pretty well. It's brand new sealed. Love that. And then from that Goodwill that we went to in the beginning of the video, got some, whoa, got a whole bunch of brand new sealed Call of Duty games right here. They're all brand new sealed. I don't want them to get ripped, but there is one special one in here. This one, a gold edition. I didn't look this one up. I paid six bucks each for these. Let's scan them in and see how much we'll make. Here it is on Amazon, decent rank, 5,000 in video games, selling for $30. So there's 21 minus my $6 buy cost. So you guys can see the breakdown right here. This is kind of interesting. So I paid $6 a piece. My shipping into Amazon will be 
50 cents or less, I'll just do 50 cents, and I'm projected to make 1470, so about 15 bucks per game. So we are at 30, well per, yeah, 15 bucks per game. So we're at 30, 60, 75, plus this gold edition. So let's scan this gold, oh, there's a sticker on it, I gotta pull that off. But let's scan this and see if it's worth any more. It actually has a better rank, and it's only selling for about two bucks more, three bucks more. Um, but I will make a little bit more on it, so we'll just say 15 bucks each. So we were at what, 75, so 90 bucks, maybe a couple bucks more. Uh, that is pretty awesome, almost $100 just on Call of Duty games. And then we found a brand new sealed HP LaserJet toner selling for $12. Now, I don't think I could sell these on Amazon, so I checked eBay, and these are selling for anywhere between $40 and $50. Uh, should cost me, you know, between eight and twelve dollars to ship. So I'm I'm projected to make anywhere between like fifteen and twenty bucks on this, and it, they sell pretty quick as well. So that's really not bad. I'm gonna check Amazon right now and see if I could sell these. So here they are on Amazon, great rank. I cannot sell them. They're selling for seventy five bucks though, selling for almost double the price. Well about 30 bucks more. That's pretty sweet. That would have been great. But hey, it's really no big deal. I'm still happy to sell it over on eBay. And then we missed one here. We got a DVD, Field of Dreams, for a buck 99 with Kevin Costner. It is a two-disc anniversary edition. It's really heavy. And you guys see what it's selling for. So not bad for a $2 purchase.